Hi okay, guys, so I just wanted to show you my crypto PNL open source project on my GitHub. It's a tool written in Python, which takes your Binance trade history and transaction history and Binance historical market data. It does the processing of all that and it produces you a report of your gains. Once you get the report of your gains from this tool, you can create a pivot table like this one here using tool like Excel or Open Office. So this is not the output of this tool by any chance. This is what you can get when you use Open Office pivot table on data produced by this tool. Okay. So this tool comes with a number of test scenarios and there is test scenario three, which is interesting because it has number of different events happening in there. Ledger is a transaction log. So this is what you download from Binance. You can see there is one deposit transaction of 20,000 euro. This is a trades history you would download from Binance. The very interesting thing is that the entries in this log are backwards. So the most recent ones are at the top. In this log, you can see what markets you traded, what are the quantities you traded and so on and the fees. And then you have market data. That's just market data you download from Binance. So you run this tool, pass this folder. That's all you do, just pass this folder with those files in it. The directory structure is mandatory. You have to have directory called ledger, trades and market data, and you have to put those files in. The names of this ledger file and the trades is up to you. You can put whatever name you want. Market data has to have market name in the name. This is the output. This is what tool has produced. So these are another CSV files. So ledger is a ledger from the input, but it's now annotated with valuation in euro for each transaction. We had deposit of 20,000 euro, so its value is 20,000 euro. The trades is the trade transactions uh, evaluated by the tool. And you can see there is a value of each trade in euros. So you can see that this trade had a value of 20,000 euro and this one had a value of 20,408 euros. So there is also prices CSV where we can see um, for each transaction how we calculated the pricing. So we can see here what market data was used to calculate the price. And then we have the output that is most important, the tracker FIFO, which is all the lots that we open and close with transactions matched against each other and gains are generated. So let me just open this one for you and show you how this one looks like. So this is the, you know, the log containing this, uh, the gains. There is a gains value in Euro, which is the column that's interesting. And there is a columns balance, which shows you after each transaction, what was the balance resulting from transaction. So now you can see each transaction has number of legs. First transaction has one leg, second transaction has three legs and so on. And for each transaction, you can see what lots were created. Let's just freeze rows and columns. When I do that, now you can scroll like this and you can see what happened here. So for example, for the first transaction, we bought euros. So we got a balance after that of 20,000 euros. We opened one lot of 20,000 euros and the opening transaction was L1, which is this transaction. The second trade has three legs. The last leg is a fee that doesn't change anything. So we only look at the first two. So the first one is to dispose euro. So we sell euro. Um, the change quantity is minus 20,000. So we had 20,000 in. Now we 20,000 is out. We had a lot, one lot created by transaction L1 with quantity 20,000. Now there is no lots anymore after this transaction and the balance after this transaction is zero. So we don't have any more euros after this transaction. You can also see in this report that it was a lot created by uh, transaction L1 that was matched, right? So this is L1 and this transaction matches this L1. 
so this is confirmation and you can see it here as well you can confirm that the lot l1 had 20,000 euro and now it doesn't have anything and the transaction also had a dollar leg which increased by 25,000 dollars the balance and we can see that there is one new lot created by transaction t1 which is this transaction containing 25,000 dollars if you look here for example this leg of the last transaction as um, bought ethereum so we got 12 and a half ethereum in exchange for one bitcoin so we have closed bitcoin lot you can see that Bitcoin lot is empty now after that and the balance of Bitcoin is zero and the balance of Ethereum is 12 and a half and here we can see which transaction created lot with Bitcoin in the first place which was transaction 2 which is this transaction so you have full traceability of everything that is happening in this report you can ask question every single transaction and you can find how the lots are created and closed and matched you can check the pricing and you can prove that the, the gains calculated are correct now the interesting thing is to take all rows from this report and use a pivot table so here we go we're creating a pivot table in LibreOffice I put ID here I want it to be account I put year and period and data like this I put simple here in row fields I put cell value gains value and change quantity okay and I click OK I copy this we can get rid of this uh, first row because it's not necessary you can now format it nicely in some ways so that's just count of trades this is the aggregate consideration uh, these are the gains okay so we can put them here and this is balance okay so now we have this nice report so I'm just gonna do delete we can see that the final balance of every asset is Bitcoin 0, Ethereum 12.5, Euro 0, USDT 0. This is not useful field because that's a total of things that you cannot sum up. I mean, you don't add Bitcoin to, you, to Ethereum, right? It would be meaningless. This is the gains of 408 euros. And this is aggregate consideration in total 60,000 euros because we disposed Bitcoin war for 20,000 for a weight, we disposed euros 20,000 and we disposed dollars 20,200. So that's our total aggregate consideration. Okay, so I showed you how to create a pivot table and how to understand it. Now let's look into the code. The cool part, right? so the tool is quite simple in what it's doing it takes those csv files it adds pricing and it does matching of lots and that's what it does it doesn't do anything more the less it does the less um, chances you make a mistake so the tool can be used as you know calculator it just calculates things it's just a little bit smarter um, so in the code we have an asset asset essentially represents a lot in our business logic so we have quantity and symbol and on top of that we also have transaction ID and we have a value in euros optional so piece of code will call set value on the asset to give it a valuation in euros but not all lots always have value it has to go through certain process so initially when we read uh, transactions so when I when I read from ledger data this is the ledger entry I'm receiving for each for each entry in the ledger 
and you can see it's this just data um, for trade similar story we we have just this data here so there is no no known pricing yet what happens next is we create this thing called journal and journal um, has these things here you pass into it uh, the wallet position tracker and transaction engine wallet is basically a very simple class that tracks your balances okay so you just have a dictionary of pockets and you have pocket per each well it's a pocket it could be asset it could be market depends how you use wallet then you have positions position has a total acquire and total dispose so this this gives you sum of all acquisitions and sum of all disposals so you can see that um, journal also has transaction engine and this transaction engine is used whenever we execute a trade or process ledger entry so the the user of the journal is feeding in here either ledger entries or trades they need to be interleaved in a sequence and user needs to know whether it is an entry of a ledger or a trade to put it here and then this transaction engine is being used to execute a trade or process ledger entry okay um the aspect of interleaving is sorted out by doing a few tricks with python generator um, so there is this combined data streams and uh, what this is doing it's taking a list of data streams so a data stream i show you a case of a data stream so you can have a trade right you open a trade csv file with trades but as i told you you can have multiple csv file with trades so for example you can have well you download it from spot market and margin isolated margin and cro cross margin so there are three files and you know you have to have them in order of time rather than uh, one after another so you, you need those entries from those three files to be you know interleaved so you can see that load trades takes a path and it is a generator of the trade objects so this simply loads one file okay but then you see for each csv file you can you can use map you can map file name into this load trade and you'll get a list of streams right list of streams each stream yielding trades from different files So having this list of streams per file, we can use use trade streams now. We have this list of streams and combined data streams will take from these streams to the merge sort. It's a merge sort of streams. Okay. This is essentially a merge sort of multiple streams. And then this thing is returning, you know, next trade. From these combined data streams so when you iterate over them you get to to tuple the second uh, element of tuple is a trade that's the next one and the first element which just tells you an index of which stream it came from so you can use that for debugging to know where is this trade coming from but this this is ignored in this function so you have to write a different one Okay, for ledger, you have similar story. And you could see actually there is this use reverse because those streams are backwards. So we need to reverse them. For ledger, we also have this load ledger function. It does exactly the same thing. It just uses ledger entry now. So for each row in the CSV, it takes and creates a ledger entry. You can see the constructor takes that and does that. And then we also have this use ledger streams, which 
combines multiple ledger streams into a single ledger stream with interleaved entries. So you can this way, perhaps from Binance you wouldn't download more than one ledger file, but uh, you may want to do just some adjustments that may not be in the ledger file and you may want to add them there. For instance, you might have uh, had some trades somewhere else or um, wallet or whatever adjustments you need to make. Now, you can also edit the ledger you downloaded from Binance and replace some of the withdrawals and deposits to add to them internal. Because if you transfer from Binance to your wallet and from your wallet to Binance, if you don't add internal, that will generate gains, you know. So in order to prevent gains to be generated from transferring into your wallet back and forth, uh, this internal is required. Now we have two different, you know, streams. So we did like a merge sort of our trade streams. And we did the merge sort of our ledgers. Let's say there's two ledgers and five trade streams. And next thing we need to do, we need to interleave those together. Let's say those ledgers come here somewhere. So, you know, this use ledger streams will, will give us one stream from multiple ledgers interleaved. It's a merge sort of ledger streams. But how do we how do we get this multiplexed stream of both ledger and trades? So that happens in our CV, CSV export and it probably is done in number of those functions here. They're quite messy, I must admit, but what can I say? Um, this is export tracker event. So this one is actually doing the export of our PNL gains. So let's look how this code works. So this is a, this would be kind of like how user would use this as library. So this is an export function and this is how you prime all those things that you need to use. So what happens first is we create this object that tracks the most recent price based on last read market data from market data streams. We prime this exchange rates calculator. So this is a magical calculator which uses prices of assets from different markets to figure out what is the actual price of asset. So this thing here is responsible for giving asset a price. And then in the prices view, you can see what it did. So you can have full trustability of what it's doing. Then you have a wallet, which will give you some sort of, you know, peace of mind. When this algorithm runs, you can confirm that the wallet would have same balances as for example position tracker and then what you exported and you have this transaction engine which will do this magical things with matching lots which we discuss in a moment and then we have journal made of wallet position tracker and transaction engine so this is how we construct this beast that will be processing those streams right so the journal is the top node, then it has a wallet, position tracker, transaction engine, and then transaction engine, you know, transaction engine has some stuff in it. And that, that's how it works. So we have these last prices, which are going into exchange rate calculator. So you see these last prices is using market data streams. And you can see that there is multiple files so what I'm doing, I'm calling load market data on each file name. So I have those market data paths. This is a list of files and I map every file name of market data file into load market data. And that gives me a list of streams containing market data. And I put this into last prices or market data streams. So when I use last prices to give me next price of some asset, um, you know, it will be reading those streams until it finds the next price in the time I'm asking. So the, the important aspect here in this last price is the time. Its interface is give me the price, you know, at that given time and date and time. 
So you say, play market data until this time. I have a transaction at 12.30 of some day. Play market data until 12.30. And until then, uh, there is this dictionary with uh, last prices and you know, we, we have the most recent prices of all the assets that were in the market data um, until that time. So that's our last prices. Then we have ledgers. So those are transaction logs from Binance. So we load each ledger. So we have a list of paths and we map this load ledger to it. And then we achieve the, the list of streams, each stream representing a ledger. And the same with trades. So you can see that I'm using map factory function and the paths and then either this set market data streams or in this case use ledger streams use trade streams in the result i'm getting these ledgers and trades so next what happens here is just this i'm taking an entry from either trades or ledgers so i put those two into a list so i create a new list Okay, so you can see we have trades, we have ledgers, and now we put that into another tree. So it becomes a tree and I combine them together. So I combine, combine, I, I combine, combine. And as a result, I'm getting a stream which has entry, which can be a ledger entry or trade entry. And the way I know from where it came from is because the first element of tuple returned by combined market data streams iteration will be telling me if it's a trades or ledgers. So which, if which is zero, it's trades. If which is one, it's ledgers, because this is index zero, this is index one. And this is what I'm doing here. If it's a zero, it's a trade. So I'm generating a trade ID for this entry. And I'm telling the journal to execute me a trade. Otherwise, it's a ledger entry and I give it ledger ID and I tell journal to process ledger entry and I keep going and all I do at the end, I just print something into our standard output and in the in the scripts, I'm literally uh, capturing standard output into a file just like that simplest possible. Okay, so what is behind the transaction engine? There is a transaction leg lurking here. There is transaction and there is transaction engine. Transaction engine has trackers. Okay, trackers is a thing from the other file. It's a dictionary of trackers. Each tracker tracks lots for a given asset. So you can see that trackers is a dictionary of trackers. So you can see of those tracker things. And each tracker thing is for a given symbol. We get into that in a moment. Okay, so that trackers. So what we basically do here is let's go to the journal. Say we execute a trade. Okay, because process ledger entry will have same logic. It's just for one leg and here we have two legs so let's execute the trade so skip the wallet skip position tracker transactions append so this will remember for me the last transaction and uh, here we do transaction engine execute trade so we call on transaction engine to execute a trade transaction engine gets a trade and for this trade, it creates the transaction. So, you know, the transaction is an object um, which allows you to store all of what happened in that trade. Because trade is like exchange this for that with given fee. But it, in, it is a transaction of matching against the lots. So there was lots of lots matched and they're all in one transaction. So that's what transaction is. And then we have transaction legs for each, you know, for each leg of a trade. So you have main leg, which is for trade 
traded amount, traded leg, which is for trade executed, and free fee leg for trade fee. Okay, we get text symbol of each of those. I'm using convention main and traded. Uh, so if you have like Bitcoin dollar, main is dollar, Bitcoin is traded. And it's easy to remember because if you have in UI interface on, on Binance um, button to buy and sell, um, you know, on Bitcoin USDT, the button buy buys Bitcoin and sells will sell Bitcoin. So the traded one on this market is obviously Bitcoin and the main is USDT. Usually these two are called base and quote. I don't use this terminology because it's confusing. Especially in this tool, the quote currency here is Euro, period. There is no, like there's only one quote currency in this here. It's, it's Euro, Every, gains are reported in Euro. So we're quoting for, for purposes of reporting gains. So get transaction leg gives us a leg for each trade leg for transaction. You can see there is a transaction leg. This is just um, you know an object to keep track. So when you create this object, it tells the tracker that we start new changes. So we branch. Kind of works like Git. We branch. When we then we do changes to the tracker and then we commit which is merge and this is how how this works we 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 create a leg we branch we commit we merge then the transaction itself has commit with just commits all legs okay but when we branch um do it here we have a get leg so when we get leg we try to find the leg so this is the python way of saying find me and then if we don't find we create one so we have this transaction leg okay so we understand how it works so we execute the trade we have those legs um, then depending on the sign we tell the legs to acquire and dispose and pay the fee so it is important that acquisition happen before disposals because this tracker dispose tracker acquire they will do the matching and we don't want matching to be done in the wrong order. Pay fee is a disposal so it ha and has to be matched before any any dispose. And pay fee is a disposal so it has to be after acquire. And at the end well, after we do all this we commit. That's all we do. So we create legs we acquire, we pay fee, we dispose, and we commit. And these activities here, they will change our legs. They will change the trackers. In what way? So this is a tracker, okay? It's for one symbol, symbol, not market. So if we have Bitcoin Euro market, then we have traded leg Bitcoin, main leg Euro, and fee depends on transaction by yourself let's forget about the fee at this moment so main and trade that would be like euro and bitcoin and then if we if we're buying bitcoin then then we're gonna be acquiring traded leg and we're gonna be disposing main leg okay let's see this tracker so this tracker will be here like say this is bitcoin which, which we are acquiring so when we're acquiring, we're matching the, the quantity we got in the trade. So this is a lot, right? So say we acquiring two Bitcoin. So this asset here is two Bitcoin in this case. And we say that if there is an asset, then we match against our disposed stack first, right? So we have two stacks. If you look here, we have acquire stack and dispose stack. These are two stacks. One is empty always and the other one is not. But it changes because you, your position is either long or short. You cannot have positions that are both long and short. So if you are long, then your acquire stack 
has elements. If you're short, your dispose stack has elements. So we match against dispose stack our acquired asset. And in the dispose, we match acquire stack. Okay? So if we are disposing something, we need to check if we have it. And if we don't have it, we're going short. So if we're acquiring, we're matching something that we are short on. And if we, if we weren't short, we're going long. Okay? If we're disposing, we're matching something we were long on. And if we don't have, we go short. Now, there is a remaining here in both cases. So if we match, we can match partially. And when we match partially, um, there will be remaining amount. So we may match something that, if we dispose, we match something that our long position. But the remaining might be something because we are disposing more. If our, our long position was two and we're disposing five, we're still gonna have three remaining, which go to short. So this is how this works. So the role of this match function is to take this asset and match it against this stack. That's the role of this function, to find on this stack if there is a match for this asset. So what are we doing in this function? We're going over, you know, stack, okay? Our remaining is initially whatever was the asset. We have this copy asset thing here. So we have a copy. So depending if we're doing the FIFO and LIFO, this will be minus one or zero. This is like a little hack here. This is a value in this in this class. So this is where we where we match. We say that the quantity of remaining, if it's greater than borrowed quantity, okay, then we need to split it. And when we split it then the remaining quantity will be what's left and the match will be what we took it will be this borrowed quantity okay and we pop otherwise we split the borrowed in this case the the remaining is bigger than what is on the stack so we we consume in full what is on the stack and we reduce the remaining in this case we split what is on the stack we reduce what is on the stack yeah we split it into the part to consume the remaining out of it right and now the the match is the remaining because we match the whole remaining quantity and uh, the remaining for the next iteration is none, so we stop the loop, right? So here the remaining was bigger, so we continue with the loop. Here the remaining is less than what is on the stack, the last lot, so we break the loop. We produce this tuple here, and this tuple is essential for generating those events that we then report into this csv file okay so depending on the direction whether we are disposing or acquiring um, whether this is acquire stack or whether this is a um, dispose stack um, the meaning of those will be different and then we append this event so this is a list of events so the transaction in the transaction we accumulated this event um, and then the next transaction will have this list empty so you can say what happened in the transaction what kind of actions happened in these transactions oh yeah so this is my crypto pnl open source project on github you can have a look at it and see if it suits any of your purpose or not and yeah have a good day.